بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى آله وصحبته أجمعين وبشرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأغرة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبره الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والصلاة والسلام على من وصف بأنه هو القرآن يمشي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله الذين تلوا كتاب الله حق تلاوته وأصحابه الذين حملوا هذا الكتاب ومن اتلى بهديهم وتسنى بسنتهم إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Welcome to الحمد لله our class on learning to read the رواية of قالون from Sayyidina Imam Nafi' al-Madani, uh, rahimahumullahu ta'ala. It's great to see a large number of people here, alhamdulillah. And oftentimes when I talk to people or people heard about taking this class, they thought like this is going to be really hard or this is something that's really advanced or that this is something that's going to be difficult. But as you're going to see, inshallah ta'ala, it, it is not that difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran after a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim wa laqad yassarna al-Qur'an li dhikri fahal min muddakir that indeed we made the Quran easy but who is going to be the one who tries and works consistently and diligently to make that happen so the onus is on us and with the passing of our dear uh, colleague uh, shaykh and, and, and scholar uh, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, Rahimahullah, Rahmatan Wasi'ah. We should all appreciate every breath we have till we leave this earth to do something good. Because, Wallahi, if we don't work hard to do good now, for sure our hereafter will be difficult. And that's how we should think about things, Alhamdulillah. Uh, before we get started, a little information just about how Swiss works, because People ask a lot of questions and it makes sense. A lot of times they ask like, you know, do I enroll in a course? So at Swiss, we, we believe in making Islamic education professional, accessible, affordable, and organized. And so Swiss follows a set curriculum, as you can see here. Sorry. Here's our courses uh, on the webpage as well as the app. And on the app, you see it more so than the web page. You have courses set up as core courses. Our core courses focus on theology, worship, and tasawa for tasqiyah to nafs. We have a large number of other courses that you can see here. And instead of enrolling in one course for, say, $75, $100, or $200 for that course, Allah subhanahu wa says, La as'arukum alayhi ajara. Like, we don't ask for profit in the Qur'an. Imam Shatibi, rahimahullah, he says, وَلَيْسَ عَلَىٰ قُرْآنِهِ مُؤَكِّلَىٰ Here's Amani, Wajhu Tahani, Sayyidina Imam Shatibi says that a person should not make the Qur'an as a means of their profit. All prophets were non-profit, right? So we feel that, and this is what I was taught by my teachers, that Islamic education has to be professional, it has to be affordable. So all of our courses are available for $9.99 a month. We don't sell one course because we believe in a process, not an event. We believe in an experience, not a moment. And we believe that learning is a relationship between teacher and student that takes time. And it takes effort. So all of these courses that you see here, alhamdulillah, we offer them to a person for $9.99 a month are live, as well as these recorded courses, alhamdulillah, uh, for their entire family. So one enrollment is good for an entire household. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَتَقَبَّ مِنَّا وَمِنْكُمْ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ صَارِحَ الْأَعْمَانِ Before also we get started, just a few announcements. Sister Iman Ali will continue her teaching the art of reading Arabic uh, next week, next Sunday, starting on July 31st. She wrote three books on this, mashallah, that are very accessible, very important books for people, those people who feel like they're too scared to learn. And I've been there. We've all been there. Um, and she had an incredible first semester. People 
loved her class. You can see it here, actually, we need to put the right size file. Um, but next week, she'll start again, inshallah, on the 31st at 3 o'clock Eastern Time Live. And then it's recorded and will be uploaded so you can watch it at your leisure. If you missed the first semester and you're interested, you can watch it, inshallah, will be posted soon. Uh, also in August, we are welcoming a Sheikh, Dr. Uh, Yusuf Wahab, who is a scholar, uh, a research scholar, alhamdulillah, at Yaqeen Institute, as well as a graduate student at the University of Chicago, who's an Azhari, who went to the same school, uh, but his master... His mastery, his scholarship is in the Quran, and he's going to be doing a series of lectures at Swiss, which are, are going to be here as well, on the history of the preservation of the Quran, because this is something now that people are concerned about, unfortunately. This is something that people, even the Muslims, begin to worry about, which we didn't worry about for almost 1,400 years. So he's going to do a series of, I think, six, four to six lectures uh, with students going through the paper he wrote for Yaqeen on the preservation of the Qur'an. Also, inshallah, I'll be returning with other classes that had started before. For example, Maliki Fiqh, and we'll continue reading from it, as well as Imam Abu Hamad al-Ghazabi's uh, Minhaj al-Abidin. And then also we have a course starting soon called After the Shahada for brothers and sisters who've embraced Islam. Oftentimes we make a mistake, and I heard this from Imam Mark Manley, which I thought was very profound and very... Um, on point. We usually ask people, even if they've been Muslim for years, to talk about their conversion. Perhaps it's better to talk, ask them, how do they preserve the Islam over 20, 30, 40, 15, 16, 5, 6 years? What we're doing today, though, alhamdulillah, is the rules for reading Qalun. And you and I, those of you who are here, before we get started, I want to remind you to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and myself. In the Maramaru Biniyat, Actions are only based on their intention. They will be rewarded based on their intentions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُرَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصَ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ Say I was commanded to recite, uh, to worship sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the statement of the scholars, نِيَّةُ الْمُؤْمِنْ خَيْرٌ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ that the niyyah of a person is better than their actions because our niyyah actually will bring more, more rewards than our actions that have mistakes. No matter how well we do an action, there's going to be shortcomings in front of the majest majesty and transcendence and sultan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's only out of the mercy of Allah azza wa jal that he is perfect and he accepts us and we are full of imperfections. And what can we do to alleviate the shortcomings of our actions? is to increase our sincerity, to in increase our ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want to remind anyone here, this class is not about growing an ego. This class is not about feeling that we're superior to anyone else. It is only by the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us even to say his name, let alone to read his book. Every time we say Alhamdulillah, it's a sadaqah. Every time we say Allahu Akbar, it's a sadaqah. Every time we say La ilaha illallah, it's a sadaqah. Who's that sadaqah for? Who's that charity for? For the one who said it. That's how, inshallah, we can appreciate. Imagine even saying Alhamdulillah is a charity for our own hereafter. What about those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them to recite his book? But I've noticed this in my own days when I was memorizing the Qur'an, as well as 20 years of teaching the Qur'an. When someone is not sincere with the Qur'an, it becomes very obvious. It becomes very obvious. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the mukhlisin. And we, we are thankful to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us in this place to be concerned and thinking about his book. Subhanallah. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Quran hujjatun lak aw alayk. The Quran is going to be testifying for us or against us. Ya Allah, nas'aduka ya Rabbana an taj'al kitabaka lana wa la alayna. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his Quran for us and not against us. Ya Rabb al -Arami. A few things that we want to cover quickly, first and foremost, is if you have the app, 
if you're using the Swiss app, it comes free with your subscription. You don't have to pay. There's no hidden fees or anything like that. But if you're using the app, Wallahi, mashallah, everything is there under this course folder. Unfortunately, on our, our um, web page, as of now, we're still struggling to upload the PDF documents. But you will find a number of important things, even if you're using the web page. And that is number one, the link to the live course, which is every Sunday at 10.30 p.m. And then our Google Classroom. We have a Google Classroom, which is our Tajweed station for students who are studying Wash, who are, who are doing Hafs, who are doing Qalun. In the future, I plan to teach even Kathir, as well as Asbahani's Tariq way of reading Wash, and inshallah, other Qiraat for students who continue to do well. I'm not looking for anyone to be perfect. I'm just looking for people to put in perfect effort, alhamdulillah. However, if you have the app and you go to the app and I don't have it with me here because I'm on my computer, not only are you going to find link to live courses and the Google Classroom information, which I'm about to share with you, but you're also going to find a copy of Qalun's, Mus the Mus'haf, the Quran with Qalun. You're going to find a link to the recordings of Sheikh al husari reading Qalun, which is really the best out there, mashallah, for those interested in learning. And then you're going to find a PDF of the book that I wrote uh, in the last few weeks on reading Qalun, which is still being edited, updated. I'm having, of course, some of the ulama to review it and make sure, alhamdulillah, those ulama that I took the ijaza from in Qalun, just to make sure that, alhamdulillah, it's solid, inshallah, and that um, it's of benefit. Ya Allah, Ya Rabb, we ask you to make us beneficial and to make us also those who receive benefits from others. Before we get started, let's also take a look at our syllabus. The syllabus you will find on the Google Classroom as well. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And the syllabus um, is also available on the app. It did not upload, unfortunately, to the webpage. So we're going to be starting, Alhamdulillah, reading Qalun. I'm the instructor. This is my email address. Do not email me asking me to come to events or things like that. Like this email is just for students. So please, like, if you want me and you need me to help you, that is fine. But like, don't give my email to people and say, you can book me here. We have something called bookings at suhaibweb.com. Mashallah, we have an awesome team. They're going to help you out. Uh, office hours, we're going to start them again soon because we have students. I see like Saad is here. Like he has was reading to me before really nicely. Mashallah, and growing really well. Uh, who want to read, alhamdulillah, we can start doing that more. I actually stepped away from my job at NYU just to do this full time. Because now, mashallah, we have so many students, so many great, like Amira, I see her here, mashallah, and Tasneem. So many, like, really dedicated, great students who really work hard. Uh, and I see also Asad here also, alhamdulillah. Um, we, of course, I remember you, mashallah. The course goals we have for this class are number one, to be conversant with the rules of Tajweed. So not only will this help you read Qalun, but if you're reading like Hafs, definitely it's going to help you improve your Hafs and Asim. And even those of you who are reading Warsh, because of course Qalun is the cousin of Warsh. They both go back to Imam Nafi Madani. Um, it's going to help you with all of those things, inshallah. Of course, the main goal is to learn the rules of Qalun, to be able to read with Qalun, to increase your habit of reading the Quran daily. Because that's really how you're going. People always ask about the teacher. What I've experienced in my life is even when I have bad teachers, if I worked hard, I benefited. So we need to make the onus on ourselves to be consistent and to be reading every day, to be practicing these small rules I'm going to give you every week, inshallah. And of course, it's going to increase your faith in the Quran. Like you're going to see things, it's like incredible. Like even tonight, like for example, Qalun, he was deaf. Like how do we have the Quran from a deaf person? And this is something that you're going to see as you learn the Qira'at, that the, the people who preserve the Qur'an and passed down the authentic ways of reading the Qur'an overcame incredible odds, such that you know this is from Allah, as though each and every one of those people is an explanation of the verse, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. We sent down the Qur'an and we will preserve it. Wallahi, preserve it for people that no one would have given a chance to succeed. Like, for example, Abu Amr al-Basri, he was a slave. Subhanallah, and he was emancipated. You talk about a history, the story of a person. Imam Asim, 
Rahimahullah. He was blind. So you're going to find uh, things as you study deeper and deeper through our system, to the system of we should be learning the Quran from Muslims, not from Orientalists, not from the Western Academy, but from this is this is the book of our Ummah. We have a responsibility. And when you learn it through Mashaykh, Wallahi, you will feel something different. You will see something different. So it's a blessing that we're here together. There are a number of other things that you're going to see as well. I didn't put here as the course goals, but there's other course goals as well. One is that you're going to develop a sense of confidence in yourself. Because most people I've met that have come into these kind of subjects and studies, they don't believe that they can do it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take you places in spite of your own insecurities if you're sincere and you work hard. There are some materials, of course, for this class. Number one is the Google Classroom. Here's the code for it. It's on the app right now. You can find it there. I can't emphasize how important that Google Classroom is going to be because that's where we're going to be sharing your, your recordings of your readings to me. That's where we're going to be engaging. That's kind of like our announcements, bulletin board, um, and other things. You can bring whatever you need to do to take notes. Uh, and again, these are recorded for you. I'm not going to be vlogging this class, so don't, don't think I can vlog it. I'm not that. My memory is not that strong. Although I did have one teacher, mashallah, when I memorized the Quran with him and reviewed it, he made me read it to him in public, even in the bus in the Muslim world. Um, and as Ali is saying, thank you, Ali, so much. May Allah bless you and increase you, Ali. The easiest way to get to the Google Classroom is just to copy the code. It's just to copy the code. Of course, the, the instructor reserves rights to change the schedule. As I see people growing, as I see people learning, uh, we can go faster or go slower. My goal is that everyone who comes here feels valued. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you to study his book. So that means you have a right on me. It's not the teacher that is the center of this. It's that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything that's happening tonight guided us to care about his book. Lahi, in this time, in this time where kufr is everywhere, where haram is everywhere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you to want to learn his book. So the one who's teaching has to make sure that everybody feels valued, alhamdulillah, and that everybody grows. Alhamdulillah. I'm not really worried about discipline. You know, I think we'll be fine. Let's quickly look at this, the first eight weeks and then we'll take a two week break and then we'll come back and continue. And I'm, I'm, an, I'm an imagining that this, this Qalun will take three eight week sessions. Three eight week sessions. Learning the rules of Qalun actually is very easy, but I wanna make sure that we're reading correctly. What I mean reading correctly is not like you have to be worried like OCD correctly but that you know what you're doing and that you have, I see you have enough skill set to continue to keep going. So tonight, inshallah, we have our intro that we're going to talk about the first three rules of Qadun. Then the week after, we're going to review rules four and five in the text. And then on the 7th of August, inshallah, we're going to review it. Then we're going to start practicing our reading. Every time we review what we took, and then we'll take the sixth rule. And then on the 14th, again, review, practice reading rule seven. And here we're going to start homework. It's not like homework, like you have to feel a burden, but I want you to start reading. And everyone who knows me, who's been my student, you know, because it's such an important chapter, we're going to be practicing with Surah Al-Hujurat. Because of course, Surah Al-Hujurat, the 49th chapter of the Quran, is called Surah Al-Adab, the, the chapter on character. And then on the 21st of August, we're going to review, practice reading rule eight, then on the 28th, I'm going to meet with you all individually on that day at different times through the Google Classroom just to do assessments, to check in with you, to see how I can serve you better, how I can improve myself, what are things that I can do to facilitate the learning for you and to motivate you and keep you going. On the 4th of December, we're going to be reviewing Rule 9, Practice Reading. Then on the 11th, we're going to be reviewing Rule 10, Practice Reading. We'll, we'll almost be halfway done with the rules by that time. And then on the 18th, we have exams, but these exams, we will do them again. I will schedule you with them, with them with you. And like, you don't have to worry about pass, fail. And I want you to be able to read 
to me sort al hujurat really well inshallah ta'ala there are a few other things that i want to show you and that is this is actually our google classroom here's the code and here you can see why the google classroom is like really important here's the text that i've written it's not finished it's not edited so please don't like share it or put it out there yet inshallah we plan to publish it uh, soon uh, here's the print of Qadun and Sa'ad is asking about the Turuq we're not really going to go into the Tariq of Hilawani we're just going to be reading the Tariq of Abi Nashit and we'll talk about that next week we're just reading with one Tariq is the Tariq of Hilawani which is Abi Nashit which is the Tariq of Shatib uh, but that's a great question if you don't know what Sa'ad and I are talking about don't worry about it it's not, not that big of a deal Here's the link to Sheikh Al Husri reading Qalun. You should live with this like, you should like live with this every day. And here's the course syllabus that I just posted. I'll check and make sure why you can't access the syllabus, inshallah. Uh, it's also available on the app, Amira. I'm so happy. Already students are on there. Dang, man. You guys ain't playing around. Are there any questions? And uh, now, Bismillah will be Mashiati Allah. Before we get started, does anyone have any questions? Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to take them. We have 12 amazing people here tonight, mashallah. And that's such a beautiful thing, alhamdulillah. Any questions? You can chat them or, or you can also feel free to raise your hand if you have any questions. I'm happy to take them from you, mashallah. Yes, Ali, please go ahead. Um, I've been going through like some of the courses, like the first Tajweed course, which is on Puffs. Um, and I hadn't completely finished it. It's probably what I've been learning throughout my life. So I wasn't, I wasn't sure if this class would be for me, but I was really just looking for having like Sokoba with the first, like an in-person teacher to make sure my recitation is correct. Should I be in this course or should I look more? To, I think you mentioned office hours before for like practicing reading. Should I look more towards that and focus on Puffs first? So what's interesting, Ali, may Allah bless you. Such a great question. First of all, you're in the right place. Alhamdulillah, welcome, welcome. Um, and you have an awesome last name. So mashallah, <laughs> Allah's rahmah is with you wherever you go. Um, so actually, Qalun is actually the first riwayah taught to students. That's why Imam al he mentions it first. Of course, due to geographical reasons, we don't learn Qalun first. But for students, like students of knowledge, when we're learning, the seven and then the ten later in Adurra, Qalun is taught first. And the reason that Qalun is taught first is its isnad is really, really strong. And then number two is it's very easy. So like Hafs and Qalun, there's just a few subtle differences, especially with the tariq of Abu Nashit that we're going to read. So I don't think you'll actually find a lot of difficulty. In fact, it may help you because certainly I'm going to be telling, like at the end, I think our last section, it's an entire section on where it's different than Hafs. So like, it, you'll be fine. You'll be fine, inshallah. You'll be fine. Yes, sir. Abu Dawa has his hand up. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Yes, Brooklyn is in the house. Yeah, you know it. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going, bro? I'm delighted everything's well. Everything's well. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. Um... Is, is this class targeted towards a certain age group or are you just taking students in? And is there anywhere I should start before I start this course? Yeah, so like, I think you want to start with Tajweed 1. Um, if your reading is not up to par, I would encourage you to go with uh, Sister Iman on Sundays. Um, but someone should have like a basic, a decent, pretty familiarity with Tajweed because I'm not going to be able to stop and always discuss like go through what terms are but i think you'll still benefit bro like I, I think you'll still find benefit like inshallah and i'm i'm always thinking about how do i teach to like people who have the least amount of exposure first yes, so yes. like i always try to think about how do i scale up instead yes. of like starting somewhere like really difficult and then and 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 this this narration actually is not hard so it's 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 really hard to make this narration hard honestly that's why we're teaching it um, and also there's other goals behind this as educators that we have at Swiss. Like one of the goals of Swiss is to make sure that the Qira'at are preserved in the English language uh, is very important for us. But then also to make sure like even with Hafs, if you look at Swiss season two, 
to make sure that we're reading with a standardized way of hafs, not just like here and there and everywhere. But I think you'll be fine, inshallah, bro. Inshallah, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Is that uh, like Congratulations on your baby also. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's yeah. why I got these these eyes like this, man. I'm yeah. <laughs> up late at night. Up late at night. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Asma Hassan also recently recently joined. So welcome, Asma. Nice to have you here. Alhamdulillah. So let's get started, inshallah. And, and there always will be time for questions at the end. Here's a book that I've written. Alhamdulillah, I wrote it, um, I think, in two weeks. So there's going to be some like uh, editing issues always. I haven't got it yet to a copy editor. She's about to start looking at it. And then we plan to publish this. We actually plan to publish a small book in the future that has all of our Swiss books in that book, if that makes sense. So like you would have like your Swiss Swiss texts. Um, and also in the winter, we're going to launch an academy at Swiss for chaplains and imams, as well as religious workers. Um, that's following the Ezhar curriculum with three or four Ezhar professors or teachers here in the United States. And actually on August 6th, it's going to be in Arabic, this one, but the one in the winter will be in English, alhamdulillah, a full-time program that people can do on their own time. So full-time, but you you paste it. Uh, we'll start in the winter, inshallah. Um, but on August 6th, we have this, the son of one of my teachers, Dr. Dr. Fatih Hijazi. Dr. Mahmoud Hijazi is going to be teaching um, Imam Al-Qazwini's abridgment of a really important text by Imam Al-Bayhaqi called The Branches of Iman that goes through like all the beautiful things about faith. And we have a really awesome translator, so I think it should be fine, inshallah ta'ala. So let's get started. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Nas'ar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yusahilana hadha al-amr kama nas'aruhu subhanahu wa ta'ala an yaj'alna mukhlisin fi niyatina wa aqwalina wa amalina ya rabbal alameen. So the rules for, for reading Qadun, I want you to just take a deep breath and prepare yourself for a really cool journey. And I hope that all of us can develop. I know Amira, I need to come to your house. I promise I'm coming now. I live in, in Maryland, but I don't want you to see me just as a teacher, but also as someone who embraced Islam, I'm with you in this journey too. Like I have Ijazah, Alhamdulillah, a very good Ijazah in Qalun. Um, from my teacher that I read to, alhamdulillah, a while back. But it's not about that, man. It's just about when the Sahaba learned the Quran, there was a sense of brotherhood and sisterhood amongst them. So I want us all to like just take a real quick moment to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for letting us study his book, man. That Allah chose you. It's if anyone came here tonight, you're having a bad day, you're like having insecurities, just realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you here to study his book. When, when somebody loves somebody, they call them. You know what I mean? And the way Allah calls us is through ilham. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires our hearts, alhamdulillah. So let's just take a moment to center ourselves and to prepare for this really amazing journey. It's so cool. And I'm so happy that we're now able to like bring this into English, man. SubhanAllah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, you wafiqna wa iyaku, inshallah. So, of course, the first rule is the basmala. Basmala in Arabic is called nahat, N-H-A-T, nahat. Nahat means like an acronym. Like hamdala is the word for alhamdulillah. Hawbala is the word for la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Basmala, it means to say bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Imam Qalun, and I put at the bottom in the footnotes, if you want to read about Sayyidina Imam Qalun. Qalun actually is an Italian word. It's from ancient Rome. And for those people like myself, there's something very powerful. When you read about the early Muslims, either they were people who embraced Islam or they were like the grandchildren of people who embraced Islam. Like Yahya, Yahya Al-Layti, the narrator of the Muatta, his grandfather was a convert. So you still find among sometimes the early Muslims you find you find people with names that are not typical Muslim names because their families are new to Islam. So that should inspire people like myself. Like my last name is Webb, right? So subhanAllah, my, 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 maybe my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, they'll still have that name. So Imam Qalun Qalun is actually a Roman name. 
because his family, his ancestry goes back to Italy, according to Sheikh Muhammad Abul Fatuh, who I read to. Husayni Imam Qalun was a student of Imam Nafi al Madani. Imam Nafi al Madani was the Sheikh of Imam Malik in the Quran. And Imam Nafi, Rahimahullah, narrates the Quran in two ways that go back to the Prophet. One way he taught to his student Warsh, who was from Egypt, uh, which we have the series on Warsh on Swiss through the Tariq of Azraq. I wouldn't advise anyone to start Warsh unless you have really a strong background in Tajweed because the riwayah of Warsh is very different. And then his other student was Qalun. Qalun. So Imam Qalun from Nafi'. So what Qalun has given us is called riwayah, a narration of Nafi. What does Nafi have? A qira'a. The word qira'a is synonymous with sahih in hadith. So al qira'a it means authenticated way of reading. And what their student passed is the riwayah. So Qalun's riwayah of a Nafi. Qalun was not the only person who read this way. Nafi was not the only way one who read the way Nafi reads, but they established it like what Imam Shafi'i did with Usul al Fiqh. He codified it so it could be taught. Nafi is one of those early Imams who began to teach how to read correctly. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And then he had so many students, but the main students he had that Imam Shatabi mentions are two Sayyidina Qalun and Sayyidina Warsh. Qalun is taught before Warsh to students of knowledge. Why? Because I mentioned to you earlier, and those of you who study Warsh with me, you know, it's very difficult. I'm actually not in favor of how Warsh was introduced, especially into America, to people who may not know how to read at all. Because it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Unless they read with Aspahani, but that's different. We'll talk about it in the future. So Imam Qalun from Nafi. Imam Qalun from Nafi reads the Basmala between every chapter except between the 8th and the ninth chapter. This is different than Warsh. Sayyidina Imam Warsh doesn't read the Basmara. Why do you have these two ways from one Imam to show that both are acceptable? This is what makes Islam actually very incredible. That in the truth, there's negotiation. Except an Aqidah. Right? But with what's right, you find different possibilities. Because some Sahaba read with the Basmara, some Sahaba didn't read with the Basmara. At times the Prophet says some hadith show, like the hadith of Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, he read with the Basmara. Then you have another hadith of Sayyidina Anas said, I heard him read the Basmara. The khalas. So both are acceptable. But this narration from Qalun to Nafi' has the Basmara, not like Warsh. Between every chapter except the eighth and ninth chapter. So now you learn the first rule. MashaAllah, you only have 19 rules left. Was it that difficult? Was it that hard? You know why it wasn't that difficult and hard? Because you're familiar with this. You're, you know what's Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So I want you to think about this right now. That familiarity makes things easy. So you may run into times in this class where you're not as familiar with some things and you feel a little like the deer in the headlights. It's okay. But just take some deep breaths slow down and remind yourself like i'm experiencing this like the more the more i experience it the more it will become easy just like this first rule that imam sayyidna qalun from sayyidna imam nafi through the tariq of abi nashid yubasmil bayna kulli surah ma ada al anfa wa tawbah that between every chapter of the quran imam nafi the qalun to nafi reads bismillahir rahmanir rahim that's why Shatabi, and I don't want to make it difficult for you, but this is a famous poem written by a blind person. SubhanAllah, he said it. He couldn't even write it. Sayyidina Sayyidina Shatabi. And in Shatabi's poem, Ba means Qalun. Abjad, Alif, is Nafi. Ba is Qalun. Jim is Warsh. But when you come across it, for those of you who want to memorize these, you don't have to. I always put Qalun in red so you can see it. If possible. So look what he says, Sayyidina Shatib. He says, Wa basmara bayna suratani bi sunnatin. Because he couldn't write Qaluna Nafi. How are you going to write a poem like that? So instead, he's like a computer scientist. He uses codes. 
And here, this is your ancestors, brothers and sisters. Like, imagine, man. Imagine how much they love the Quran. A blind person dictated this poem, more than a thousand lines. And he created a code for every Qari. Ba is Qalun. Ra is Kisai. Noon is Asim. Dal is even Kati. I put it in circles just so you can like appreciate it. So out of the seven Qurra, he mentions one, two, three, and then one of the students with letters, man. It's so cool. But he says, suratain which means to make the basmara to observe Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim between chapters be qalun sunnah is sunnah. It's been narrated on behalf of Sayyidina Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rijalun kisai namuha asim hafs and sha'ba both. Diriyatan dadal is even kathir wa tahammula. What this verse, what this line of poetry means is that Qalun and the other Imams, they read Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. One of my teachers, teachers, teachers. Sheikh Ahmed al Dabba, al Dabba with Dad. He was Egyptian, he died in 1961. MashaAllah. He wrote an entire poem just about Qalun. And he says, Fabasmil, Fabasmila, Fabasmilahu fi suratani wasil, a What does that mean? That if you read with Qalun, you can connect, like you can say, وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ You connect it together or you can stop. يعني وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ خلاص. So with, with قالون you have what's called وصلة or al fasl you can read the basmara connected between both chapters or you can stop i'm not going to talk about the different permissible ways and impermissible ways to read bismillah rahman rahim why because it's going to confuse you but just just remember this if you want to connect the two surahs together with basmara you should not read the last the last verse of the first chapter with the bas the basmala and then stop. For example, You shouldn't do that. Why? Because now it sounds like Bismillah Rahman Rahim is an ayah from Surah Al Fatiha. That's the only way it's not allowed. Just remember that. Don't stop if you connect it to the last verse of the first chapter that you're reading. Don't stop after the basmala. Continue. But you, you, you can read it every other way is allowed. So I just taught you the way you shouldn't read it. But the point to make it simple for you, just remember this. When you read with Qalun, you, can, you should say Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. And then you say that between the two chapters. Here we see sort of we see sort of Fatiha, and this is Qalun's narration. Here's the Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So let's imagine I'm reading Surah Al Nas, and even in Warsh, if you read Surah Al Nas and you go to Fatiha, you have to say the Basmala. But now we're talking about Qalun only. So let's say I'm making Khatam of Quran. I say, Min al Jinnati wa Nas. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdu Hakada Wala Mia Kullahu Kufu An Ahad Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Kul Au Dubi Rabbil Falako Khalas. So you can see here, mashallah, the first rule is to read the Basmala between each chapter except Surah Al Anfal and Surah Al Tawbah which all the scholars agree you shouldn't do. Any questions about this first rule? Alhamdulillah, uh, before we go on to the next rule. It's super easy. It's not complicated. It's not complicated.
Awesome. The next rule, alhamdulillah, is extending and shortening mud. The word mud means to extend. I say to you, amuddu ilayka yaday li usallima alayk. I have extended my hand to you so I can give you salam. The word mud, mim dal, maddada, actually means to extend. And we know that we have two major type of muds that all of us learned in Tajweed season one, mud munfasil and mud muttasil. Mud muttasil is a connected mud, mud munfasil is a disconnected mud. We're going to give you a few examples in a second. Qalun reads the connected mud with four haraka. Just remember that. Khalas. Whenever you come across a connected mud like ulaika ala rabbihim four haraka. What does four haraka mean? Two Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. When we were kids, we used to play hide and go seek. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. A haraka is like half a second, actually. So Imam Qanun, he reads the connected mud with four haraka. I want to make an important point here that none of the Qurra relate reading the connected mud with less than four haraka. None of them. None of the ten. And that's why sometimes on TikTok or on Instagram, I see people that have really nice voices, but they are not reading mud muttasil correctly, and that is a problem. Nobody should want to present themselves unless they have prepared themselves. For example, I see people that go, wasama'i wa tariq. It's not wasama'i wa tariq. It has to be four. Wasama'i wa tariq. Four. Haraka. At a minimum. Sayyidina Imam Qalun, in the way I'm teaching you, we're going to be reading mad muttasil with four haraka. Shatabi, he says, and don't worry so much about Shatabi. This is for some of my more advanced students who are here or are watching. Which basically means if you find mad muttasil, tuwila. Tuwila means what? At a minimum four. At a minimum four. For those of you who read Hafs, perhaps you saw in the back of the uh, Quran that's printed especially from Saudi Arabia it says you can do what's called fuwaiq al muttasil you can read muttasil with 5 this is incorrect we'll talk about it in the future maybe and i may have addressed it in season 2 or season 3 in hafs but you can read hafs 4 or 6 not 5 but for alhamdulillah qalun our second rule Whenever we come across a connected mud, and I'm going to show you what is a connected mud in a second, mud muttasil for haraka. That's it. So, mashallah, now you finish two rules a basmala between each chapter, and then to read for haraka. We have, let me see here. We'll get to it in a second. You're talking about right here? There's no difference. Just means Hamza Tawasa. Just Hamza Tawasa. The second type of mud is a mud mun fossil, a separated mud. There are two ways that Qalun reads this. One is with four harakah. The other is with what's called Qasr. You know Qasr? It means a palace because a qasr, it protects, it restrains. So qasr in tajweed means you restrain the length of the mud. And what that means is two haraka. It is the preferred way to read qalun and it's the way I want you to read to me. So now you got three rules. Mud munfasil, four haraka. Uh, Mutasil, excuse me. Four haraka. Mad munfasil, two haraka. Khalas. I, I, don't, I don't need anything else. I don't need anything else. I don't need any more discussions. And this, this, I just want you to learn how to read. And I want to encourage students just learn how to read. Just follow me. 
when we go in our third semester of Qalun, then we will, and I see people reading really confidently, then we'll unpack some other things that are more theoretical, but not practical. I want you to focus now on the practice. So mud, muttasil, four haraka, two Mississippi. Mud munfasil, two haraka, one Mississippi. And that's why Sheikh Ahmad al Dabba, he says, Fawasit awiqsur, wasta mad tasil qbala. Waman fasara, fawasit awiqsur, here. And any mud which has infisal, mud munfasal, fawasit arba'a, means wasit tawasit, means four haraka. Awiqsur, or du qasr, two haraka. And I said up here, the scholars prefer to Ahlul Adah through Ijaza. When we read to our Mashaykh, they prefer us to read two, but sometimes they may ask us to read four just for practice. Halas. There are other type of muds that we all know, especially in worship becomes complicated, and in Hafs it's very easy, and Qalun is the same as Hafs in all of them. Number one is Badal. Mud Badal, why is it called Mud Badal? Because usually the mud is caused by the Hamza. But in the case of mud badal, the mud comes after the hams. They inverted, they exchanged mud. That's why it's called badal. A-manu. A-manu. We know, of course, in warsh, this can be read with four or six. Ilaladina But we're not reading warsh. We're reading qalun, alhamdulillah. Qalun is a lot easier, just qasr. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقَّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ خلاص. Don't worry about it. امشي على طول. Don't think too much. This, this, this. لا. Just do this. Just do قصر. With mud badal. The second mud عارض للسكون like العالمين where the noon is added on sukun. The same as hafs. Sayyidina Imam Qalun through Abi Nashit reads it with Qasr, Tawasit, Tawasit or Ishba. If you're reading to me, I prefer you do Qasr. Why? We ain't got a lot of time. It may be five or six other students waiting. It used to go crazy, especially when I was teaching Warsh. I would have students who would do Ishba of Al Alameen. I say, Ya Allah, it's going to take an hour to finish one rubber. Irhamni, ya akhi. Make it easy for me, man. So we're going to read with Qasr. Qasr. Finally, Mad Lazim, and this is what Saad asked about a second ago, sort of related, just like Sayyidina Imam Hafs, six haraka. Adalin, three long Mississippis. If we look at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, we find an example of all three types of muds. And before we look at them, I just want to make sure you understand what is mad muttasil and mad munfasil. And I'm going to teach you an easy way to remember this. This is a tajweed hack. I'm going to get in trouble with some teachers for teaching you this, but I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the heat. So if you look, for example, bima, this is a mud. You don't see the mud here because we're reading with qasr. But oftentimes, for example, in hafs, you're going to find here, on top of ma, a mud. Because hafs allows you to read it with four. In qalun, because the, the, the print I'm using is printed with qasr munfasil, it doesn't even put the mud. The point is, if you look at that mud, and you look after it, there's a hams on a stick. Remember this rule. Whenever you see a, a mud on a stick, a, a hamza on a stick after the mud on an alif, that means this is a broken mud, munfasil, disconnected, disconnected mud. And if you studied Bahjatul Hadh with, he, with me, I think Tajweed season two, you already know exactly what I'm talking about. In the book I wrote, A Treasure Found, you already, I don't even need to explain this to you. You know what I'm talking about. But for those of you who are what's disconnected, connected, a disconnected mud, whenever you see a little mud symbol like that, if there's an alif 
and a hams on top of it, this is called mud munfasid. Imam Qalun, he doesn't even read a mud, he only reads with qasr. So that's why if you look at this print, what do you not see? You don't see a mud. But if you open up a hafs print of the Quran, you're going to see a mud there. Because hafs yamuddu al munfasid. But Qanun, in the way I'm teaching you, we don't. So how, would you, how do we read it? Very easy. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ Just like that. No ma... None of that. Qalun is easy. So I like to tell my students, Qalun is easier than Hafs. Wallahi, it's easier than Hafs. That's why it's taught first. Sayyidina Imam al-Shatibi, rahimahullah. When he mentions the Qurra, the first he mentions Qalun. Because... As I said earlier, sihat sanad qawi jiddan. All the other asanid also are strong, but also because it's easy. So, walladina yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzil. So here we see munfasil, munfasil, qasr. But if you look at ula'ik, there's the mud symbol, and there's the hams. That hams, that hamza, which is called hams, is not on a stick. Whenever you see a mud and the hams after it is not on an alif, that's muttasil. Mud muttasil, connected. Whenever you see a mud, and you're not going to see it in this print, and the hams after is on an, an alif, that's munfasil. Separated mud, connected mud. Why is that important for you? A separated mud, two harakah. A connected mud, four harakah. That's it. Let me read it for you so you can see. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْرِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ Mud badal. We learned earlier, mud badal also, without a mud. Warsh. وَبِلَا سِيرَةِ قَالُوا نَوْمَدْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Just like حفظ وَبِلَا خِيرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًا مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So all the mud that I just taught you are here لازم أَلِفْ لَا that lamb is madlazim. Six haraka. Thalikal kitabu la rayba fi hudal lil muttaqeen. Lil muttaqeen. Lil muttaqeen. Arid lil sukun. Alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaybi wa yuqimuna salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْرِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًا مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ It's better to connect here, but I just wanted you, you to be able to hear it. So here, if you go back and you have the text now, alhamdulillah, all these type of muds are here. If you don't know this terminology, then again, look at Tajweed 1 and go through the section on mud. And even I put examples here for you. So we took a very simple rule, mashallah, but it has a big impact. That is extending and shortening the muds. This is mud muttasil. And here's, here's the part of the poem that you want to pay attention to by Sheikh Ahmad Dabba' al-Azhari. You can do tawasit, arba'a, or qasr, two, haraka. And we said our reading, we're going to do two. But maybe one day you go to somebody to read Qalun and they're going to test you. And they're going to ask you, read the other way of Qalun. What do you mean the other way? Tawasut al-Munfasil. Tawasut al-Munfasil. Read Munfasil with what? 
for harakah. So if that situation, you're going to say, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ In tajweed, in, in tarawih, I love to read with qasr. Why? Because it's quicker, but you're not giving up any of the rules. Because the goal is not to read fast. Are there any questions about these muds? Later on, as we continue to learn, you're going to see how this has some relationship to some other rules that we're going to observe. But right now, just remember in your mind, mud munfasil, qasr al munfas, just like hafs that I taught you through the tariq of mu'addil. And mud muttasil for harakah, khalas. How do I recognize mud munfasil? The hams is sitting on an alif. How do I recognize after a mud? How do I recognize mud muttasil? The hams is not on an alif after the mud. خلاص. Any questions about this before we take our last rule for tonight? And then we're going to do some reading. We're going to do a little bit of reading and practice what we learned, inshallah. How's everybody feeling? How's everybody doing? Just going to do a quick check-in to make sure everybody's okay. Inshallah khair. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Good to be back too, bro. It's been a heck of a month and a half for me. I almost died. <laughs> so we'll talk about it in the future, but Alhamdulillah, Allah is merciful. Alhamdulillah, Allah is kareem. Now we're going to take our last rule for tonight. And I, I wonder, I, I wonder what this word is going to be. Oh! It's Anna. Anna means I. Imam Qalun, for reading the word Anna, because look, Anna ends with an alif sakin after a noon with fatha. That's a mud. Mad tabi'i. Imam Qalun, mashallah, has some rules for this word. But if you notice in the print, you see that little gray symbol? That means as though it's not there. As though it's not there. So you don't read it. It's there written for the meaning, for the grammar. But it's, it's great to tell you, don't read me. Just like that Dhamma, don't read me. Connect me to the moon, the noon. Idram, Amim, Idram. So I gave you another Tajweed hack. I'm going to get in trouble with teachers. When Anna, the word Anna means I, is followed by any letter other than Hams, Hamza, you do not extend the fatha on the noon. You don't read the alif. You say, So I don't, I'm going to read it slow for you. I don't say, I say, Slight difference. When Anna comes in front of an alif, though, with fatha or dhamma, Imam Qalun reads the alif of Anna. So, for example, in Surah Al-Kahf, Anna akhtharu min kamalaw wa'azu nafara. So here, Anna akhtharu. I don't say Anna akhtharu. I'll read it slow for you. I'll read it slow for you the right way. Then I'll read it slow for you the wrong way. Ana akhtharu min kamala. I don't say ana akhtharu min kamala. I read that 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 one long second. However, while in front of a kasra, he reads it two ways. So with dhamma or fata, you read it. Ana uhi wa umid surat al Ana uhi wa umid. Don't say ana uhi wa umid. Ana uhi wa umid. However, with kasra, there are two ways to read it with qalun. But the preferred way is with the alif. Wa ma ana illa. Wa ma ana illa. The other way, it's allowed. Wa ma ana illa. Wa ma ana illa. 
So just remember to make it easy for you. Whenever I see the word Anna and after it is Hams, Hamza on an Alif, I read the Alif Abna. Khalas. Now what we're going to do, inshallah, will be idnillah. We're going to do some practice. Yes, uh, Abu Da'wa, you have a question? No, no, I'm sorry. I was messing with the phone. Sorry. Why are you playing, man? Pay attention, bro. I am. We're going to put, cor- put you in the corner, man. <laughs> I'm going to give you detention. <laughs> sorry about that. No, it's okay. So now, alhamdulillah, we all have Surah Al-Fatiha in front of us. Um, there's only one real change in Surah Al-Fatiha is Medic. Mariki Yawmiddin, without the mud, it's not Mariki Yawmiddin, Mariki Yawmiddin. And my advice to you all now is when you pray now, and when you read Quran, try to pray and read with Qalun, even if you make mistakes, it's okay. Those aren't mistakes that are going to invalidate your prayer. I'm going to read it for you. If you guys want to read along with me, you can also unmute yourself and read along with me as well. And inshallah, I'm going to show you just a few of the differences in Qalun that we may run into. And most importantly, practice the rules that we learned today. Inshallah. So let's begin with Surah Al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahi rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman rahim Mariki yawmit deen. I didn't say Mariki yawmit deen. Anafi. Khalas. Uh, Imam Shatibi says, Wa Mariki yawmit deen yarawi hi nasirun. Wa inda sarati wa sirati li kumbula. Yani Mariki yawmit deen yarawi hi nasirun. Yani Mariki yawmit deen. Only two of the seven read it that way. The other five, they read it like this. Maliki yawmit deen. Maliki yawmit deen. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim wa Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. <clears throat> I'm gonna test you guys. You guys tell me if I read it wrong. Okay. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina, and I'm Ta'alayhim Ghayru Mardu Bialayhim, what a Bolina Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif La. Was there any mistakes there? No. All right, help me. I'm a new Muslim. I need some help. You recited uh, uh, the last verse of uh, Al-Fatiha with the Basmala for Al-Baqarah and you stopped before saying Alif Lam Mim. Yeah, and that is not allowed. Nice. Good job. Who said that? Who was that? Uh, Al-Faqir Zakaria. أهلاً وسهلاً يا زكريا الغني إن شاء الله أغناك الله تعالى إن شاء الله أجمعين يا رب أجمعين All right So سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألف لاميم Anybody catch a mistake? The Bismillah was going to say Bismillah yeah, good. See, it ain't hard, bro. I didn't say the basmala. Somebody's like, oh, but man, I'm reading Nafi', man. I'm reading Imam Nafi'. People, first of all, people shouldn't talk like that who study the Quran. Yeah, and aqra Nafi'. When I aqra amshi bi tariq Nafi'. La, ya khi. Just be, be easy, man. It's not correct. That's warsh. But that's not qalun. Khalas? Maybe somebody ask, why? Why? One of my teachers used to say in, in the College of Sharia, if Muslims would study the Qira'at, they will never argue about religion. Like in the right things. 
because the Qiraat teaches us maturity, teaches us how to like appreciate correct differences, not wrong differences, correct differences. We can argue over bad differences, but with adab, of course. So I'm going to try. You guys are hard teachers, by the way. I'm starting to get intimidated here. What if I went like this, guys? Would that be wrong? Of course. Because this is mad lazim. So this has to be six. Alif lam. Dharik al kitab la rayba fi hudal lil muttaqin. Same as hafs. Alladina yu'minun. Not like warsh. Warsh yu'minun. Qalun. يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ورش صلاة قالون حفص صلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبرك All right, I'm looking for my teachers to correct me والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبرك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون. Of course, this is wrong. I read this like mud, mud, lazim. But there's no mud. This is mud, huh? قصر. And there's a rule. If you read with قصر with mud منفصل, you have to read it the rest of the way with قصر. Don't mix it. Don't go. بما أنزل إليك وما it's not it's not appropriate. It's called عيب يعني عيب في القراءة. أولئك على هدم ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون. خلاص. I'm just going to read a little bit more so you can see what's coming in the next few weeks, and then we're going to go to one more verse and we're finished for the day. إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أنذرتهم. You hear something different here? This is called تسهيل. تسهيل means to cut the hums in half. So آه, 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 not ها. آه. Don't make a ها آه sound. Imagine if you just read, read half the hamza. So you don't say آه. You say آه, آه. This is what that symbol means. It's in the book. It's coming. In two weeks, we're going to be introduced to something called Tashil. Tashil. We're seeing. It's very important. But also, you notice there's a, a mud here. Idkhal al-alif. This is something which Qalun does. That Warsh doesn't do or Hafs doesn't do. Watch. We know Warsh. Uh, he also has tasheel, but not the same way as Qarun. You're not learning this now, but just to show you, it's coming. So, uh, There's one other thing that we want to go through quickly. And then we're going to stop for any questions or any thoughts. I hope everybody is doing well. I'm going to also review what we took uh, tonight. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, then we will be done. Bithnillah. These beautiful verses of the Quran and Surah Al-Baqarah, Alhamdulillah, we find our rule for Anna. The rule that we learned. Qad Allah Ta'ala. Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu. Here's mad badal. Amanu. We don't say amanu like warsh. We read it like hafs and qalun the same. Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu yukhrijuhum minal dhurumati ilan nur. 
وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَا What type of mud is this, guys? There's the mud. There's the Hamza. Is this a connected mud or disconnected mud? Who knows? Everybody's so quiet. It's connected. Yeah, it's connected. Why is it connected? Because that's not on an alif. Why don't I read that? Because that gray means it's it's only there for the spelling and the grammar, but not for the recitation. Ula, here's again mud muttasil, connected mud. Ula ika ala ula ika alshabun nari hum fiha khalidun. And here comes our rule. Alam tara ila levi ha mud lazim six haraka. If the mud after it is a shadda, this means that half of this jim is sukun. And half of this gene is fatha. So that's why it's mud lazim. Alam tara ila ladhi hajja ibrahima fi rabbihi rabbihi silla. But again, this is mud munfasil. How do I know it's mud munfasil? Because the hams after it is on an alif. Fi rabbihi an atahu allahu al mulka ith qala ibrahimu rabbiya alladhi yuhyi wa yumit qala ana. Here's ana. Oh man. How do I read it? You guys tell me if I read it right or wrong. Be easy on me though. I'm new to this. Qala ana uhyi wa umit. Or is it qala ana uhyi wa umit? I'm going to read it slow. Qala ana uhyi wa umit or qala ana uhyi wa umit. Which one is correct, the first or second? Second. The second. Absolutely. Because here's ana and after it is what? Alif mahmuza wa madmuma. An alif with hams and dhamma. Qala ana, qala, qala ana uhi wa umid. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So today, alhamdulillah, we took these rules and I want to show them to you one more time to make sure we can go over what we did. We did a brief introduction, alhamdulillah. Next time, we're going to just jump into it. We talked about, first of all, basmara wa basmara bayna suratayni bi sunatin. Imam Qalun. Imam Qalun, he recites the basmala out loud between every chapter except Anfal wa Tawbah. And of course, if you finish Nas and go back to the Fatiha, the basmala. If you stop at a chapter and go to the beginning of like, if I finish Shul Tukaf. Khalas. And then I go say to Surat, um, Surat al, 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 al Imran. If I finish Shul Tukaf, and I go back to Anim Ran also Basmara. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alif Lamim. The second rule that we took, Alhamdulillah, after the Basmara is for the muds. Mutasil and Munfasil in particular, but other muds in general, just to make it easy for you. And Qalun, he reads the mud, the connected mud for Haraka. Ula ika ala hudam rabbi. Right? Two long Mississippis. The next mud that we took is the disconnected mud. As Sheikh Ahmed al Dabba, he says, Waman Fasara Fawasit Awiqsur. You can do either Tawasit for or Qasr too, but we said the preferred way and the way that we're reading is with Qasr. Put that palace on it. Then we talked about mad badal, qasr. We talked about arad lis sukun, you have three options. And then we did mad lazim, sitta harakat. And then we went through each example here in Surah Baqarah. The smart student is the one that's going to say to themselves, wow, 
Suhaib, he went through this, this, these verses. Maybe I should memorize these verses in Qalun this week, or at least learn to read them correctly, because I know now how to read them. The last rule that we took is Anna. We said, mashallah, if it's followed by any letter other than Hamza, we don't extend Anna. If it's followed by Alif with Hamza, whether it's Kasra, Dhamma, or Fatha, we read it Anna. And we said with Kasra, there's two ways, but this, the way that we want to stick with is observing it. Next week, inshallah, we're going to talk about the plural meme. Alaykum, alayhim, ilaykum. And there are two different ways to read it in Qalun, but the way that we're reading it is the easier way. As Shatibi said, Dirakan wa Qalunu bi takhirihi jala. Oh, there's a line right there. And then we're going to talk about what's called Ha al Kinaya. And we'll be done next week, inshallah. Any questions, thoughts, or comments? How's everyone feeling about our class? How did the class go for you guys? Yes, Abu Dawa. Alhamdulillah, more, more than beneficial. I'm really uh, enjoying and picking up a lot of things that um, I either, either I missed before or it's something new. So, Alhamdulillah, I'm loving it. No problem, no problem, no problem. No problem, Asma, no problem, Alhamdulillah. Excellent. Inshallah, please let other people know. Encourage them to join our class. Again, remember that the Google Classroom information is on the app. You want to be there, especially if you're reading and doing your assignments. Uh, as well as, alhamdulillah, other things. Qalun is not difficult. In fact, the qira'ah in general are not difficult unless we make them difficult on people. And remember, there's light in this. This is something that our ancestors left for us. And we can all, again, as we finish, make special dua for a Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. Nas'arullah azza wa jalla bi asma'ihi kulliha wa sifati li'ula. An yataqabbalahu wa yunawar qabrahu wa yaghfirlahu dhanubahu jami'an ya rabbal alameen. ويحفظ أولاده وأسرته حفظ الصالحين وأوليائك المقربين يا رب العالمين بارك الله فيكم إن شاء الله we'll see you guys next week if you enjoyed the class please post online encourage people to subscribe to join Swiss uh, and to jump in and just get started with us we will post this recording uh, within the next 24 hours as well so people can watch it جزاكم الله خيرا it was a pleasure next time we'll finish on time today of course we had to do some Housekeeping announcements. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.